On this episode of the 5P Podcast, I, your host, Michael J. Penny, am going to be talking about, well, planning for next year. And if you haven't figured out this whole plan for the next year thing yet, uh, it, it needs to happen almost all the time. It's weird. It's like starting and completing a circle in the same spot just kind of doesn't happen. It seems almost chicken or the egg cart in front of the horse, and we're going to get into why always planning for next year is the basis of planning for action coming up on the 5p podcast so let's start right here with the main problem many organizations plan for the next fiscal year well in advance we already know this have you the individual leaders started planning for next year's work for your team for your immediate group have you looked at hires mission what is your higher leader's mission in the organization? What is the mission of your overall organization that you are a part of? Have you looked at the missions of the units adjacent to your own? What is the mission of adjacent units similar to your own, other departments that are within the construct of your organization, those similar to the makeup of your team, if you're a smaller team leader you're not a department head you're smaller in, in stature in the organization and what is the mission of your supporting agencies internal and external to your own supporting assets that are helping you in your mission and what is the mission of your clients and your customers understanding these things allows us to build a framework for the situation in which we are working it gives us a better appreciation for it. If you're unfamiliar with our planning templates, go ahead, join the 5P Inner Circle. And when you do, you're going to have access to all of our planning templates, as well as the learning environment and the learning experiences that encompass each one of those templates. The mission on this current episode. During... During this podcast, what I'm going to talk about is three simple steps for reviewing this year's material in order to plan for next year's activity. According to the feedback gathered by those who participated, ergo, the workers, leaders, customers, clients, and supporting assets and agencies that have participated in this year's activity now the intention is for you the listener to build a plan for taking action based off of the actual events which took place during last year this past year whatever information you had gathered from this past year if you're already inside of the 5p inner circle then you're working with our debriefs and our after ration reports you're doing a, a debrief upon completion of an immediate action Typically, what I recommend is that you're doing a briefing in the morning and a debriefing in the afternoon whenever you're getting out. Let's say in a 9 to 5, whenever you come into work, you're getting a briefing. Whenever you leave, you're doing a debriefing on the day. It's typically what we're talking about. And so the intention here is for you to be able to look at those debriefs which are daily, and be able to compile them into an after action report, which is weekly, could be monthly, depending on the operational cycle of what you're doing. But you are compiling that feedback, that information, so that you can back up that which you are discussing in your after action review. So, Scheme maneuver on this one, what you're looking at potentially doing, what you're looking at actually doing, is work with fellow business leaders in your company who are planning for next year. Get with them, your adjacent unit leaders, other leaders of similar stature to your own inside of your organization. Gather feedback, learn from them, learn from their debriefs, learn from their after action reports. If you're already a part of the 5P Inner Circle, we talk about the proper way to conduct an after-action review. And in coordinating instructions in regard to pulling together all of these elements, 
using the 5P template to perform an after action review is beginning of the revision process on your 5P plan. A lot of times I describe this as being both the end and the beginning of a circle. It's how do I start a plan? Well, you have to revise what you were doing before. Well, you have to go before that. You have to review actual things that were occurring. How are you gathering any feedback? How are you gathering feedback from your people at the lowest possible level? How are you gathering intelligence? And then when you're putting together the intelligence, can you back it up? So this is why we have debriefs. When you go through into the 5P inner circle and you look at all of the templates that we got, you'll see one of them on there is the debrief. It's very simple. It's not this huge, long, gigantic form that you have to fill out. It's one page. And it plays off of the fragmentary order. You get a fragmentary order. That's your immediate action. That, that starts the day. Here's what's happening today. Fragmentary order. Immediate action plan. That's it. Boom. You go through your day of work. That is your action. Things took place. You fill out debrief at the end of the day. And we're talking about lowest man on the totem pole type stuff right here. Because we are gathering that feedback. Well, who actually conducts the debrief? Lowest possible le leader. Might be the supervisor. Might be the manager. But it is the lowest possible leader. If you're in charge of somebody, you best be doing debriefs. You better have gathered a whole lot of feedback from your people. Some of it you might even think is trivial. But little trivial things, in your own opinion, can be the thousand tiny cuts that lead to your organization breaking apart. And it, it sounds like, hey, we're going to provide this huge level of comfort, and thus we're going to create complacency amongst our employees. No. What you're doing is you're gathering debris from the lowest level and you're hearing them out. And more often than not, an employee's opinion, just hearing them out is enough to get it off their shoulders. All right. If it repeatedly happens, then that finds their way. That information finds its way into the after action report. You hear about this every single day on all of your debriefs. And then at the end of the week, you write an after action report that says, what is trivial to me, <laughs> right? Maybe goes on to the after action report. So it's something that has to be on the report. You can't solve it at your own level. Boom, it pops up. And that's the thing. That's why we're doing this. So what you're doing when you say, you know, you're working with fellow business leaders inside of your organization, other adjacent unit leaders, and you're using this template to perform an after action review, what you're doing is you're putting together topic, discussion, recommendation. The topic is... It starts with the largest priority. It starts with the biggest, most important to you. Most important topic to you. Always comes up by your team. Cannot solve it at your level. If you did, you would have already solved it. You, you might see this organization wide. Here's what I'm picking up on. And then you discuss it. Discussion does not need to really even be paragraph form or something along those lines. It could just be a, a couple of bullet points. Here's the topic. It's important to me in bullet points. You're just putting condensed, clear, concise language. As far as the discussion, the recommendation to the best of my knowledge and experience, this is what I would recommend to the best of my knowledge and experience. Someone ever gives you grief or saying to the best of my knowledge and experience, this is what I would recommend. If, if a leader ever gives you grief, I would question as to why they even hired you to begin with. You were put in this position where you're at. You are a leader for a reason. And it is because of your knowledge and experience 
So to the best of your knowledge and experience, what do you recommend we do about this? That needs to be put down into your after action review. Again, the template for this is on the 5P inner circle. It's super simple. We talk through these things on the learning experiences. And I want you, the individual leader, to be able to go through a simple review process. Write it down, folks. Topic, discussion, recommendation. It's bullet point. It's just topic one, discussion, recommendation, topic two. Topic three, so on and so forth. And we have the template. It's already up on 5P Inner Circle, plus a further learning experience on this. We are in after action review, bear in mind. This is both the beginning and the end of the circle. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're going, how do I start my five paragraph business plan? You can start straight away with the information that you've got. I am going to be talking to you in a similar manner to where you need to go and gather information from what already exists inside of your organization. I'm going to tell you what you need to, to gather. What you don't know, you don't know. Okay, so this is not just an organized structure for being able to create a business plan, but it also gives you, the leader, the ability to go around and ask the right questions. So you can either start by creating a plan which is fresh, because you're going into a fresh area of business, might be a fresh product line, marketing, whatever the case may be. In this case, what you're doing is you're the leader. You might have recently been promoted. Maybe you're just getting on the jump right now as far as planning for next year. Which you're kind of always planning for next year if you use this accountability method. I told you to come back later on in the episode. But look, the desired end state here is that you have the ability to gather feedback and to create an outline for next year's plan. You need to be able to establish a solid feedback loop from getting that from your people. Go ahead, go go, go read Jim Mattis' book, Chaos. He'll talk about a feedback loop in there. He'll see exactly... I'm, I'm literally using the exact same template that he and I used when we were in the Marine Corps together. He used to be one of my commanders at the division level. But this is the exact same template that we maintain for, for gathering feedback and accountability. This is how we do it. So what I would recommend is you go and you join the 5P Inner Circle to have access to all of the templates, all of the learning experiences that we have to offer, and be prepared to ask for feedback from your superior leaders, your subordinate leaders, your adjacent leaders, the other folks who are paying attention to the same stuff in their own environment as you are. Right? You have your own scope, but you're paying attention to it in a certain way. You're a leader within your environment. Now, you can learn more about the overall 5P experience uh, if, you would like to, if you would like to click on the link in the show notes here, which are provided. If you would like to go to www.5paragraph.com and check out the 5P inner circle, it's great. What's wonderful when you, this this is the simple stuff. Getting 5P down pat takes about, if you are an avid learner and you want to jump right into it, it'll take you a day or two. And then to be able to start to work and progress and complete a plan, it'll take about two weeks to complete a plan. Because, you know, there's information gathering that needs to be done. There's market research that needs to be done. You got to go talk with Benny and accounting about what the actuals were for last year. You know, there's certain process wise, there's certain bottlenecks that are going to occur while you're trying to complete your plan. Maybe other folks don't care that you're trying to complete your plan. So now if you're certain from, from square one and you're like, I just want to dive into this and really complete my plan. Honestly, I believe it's going to take you. A week, maybe two, maybe two weeks of if you work on this stuff the way that I do. 
where it's like you you know i say the way that i do i hop out of bed in the morning just woohoo let's do this uh anybody who knows me i can be a morning guy sometimes i can be a little groggy like anyone else but i really do like waking up and getting after the day uh get up you know you get up and affect the day do not let the day affect you you need to get a jump on it whatever the case may be and you hear plenty of people say this well, i'm gonna get up and be highly motivated and do all of these other wonderful things i mean it really is it's like get up brush the teeth and then immediately start diving into this type of material and you're gonna be you're gonna be rocking on 5p within a week week or two now i say that mastering 5p will take a lifetime it's i learned it as a private I was planning and coordinating missions as a sergeant and was getting operation orders from the top, from the head of the Joint Chiefs, all the way on down, all operating in this planning template. So it's something that leaders throughout the U.S. military, especially the Marine Corps, the Army, the Navy, where we have conjoined operating assets, and it is all... It is all of the branches of the armed forces that operate on the five paragraph operations order format to some extent. There's one or there's sustainability, for instance, something that the army does that the Marine Corps doesn't fun little tidbit of, of, a uh, uh, of fact, you know, the Marine Corps, typically what we would do is we would push through areas, secure areas. And then sustainability in the long run, occupation in the long run, was then turned over to the U.S. Army. You know, a lot of folks would ask, well, how does that work? How does, a U uh, how does a U.S. Marine turn something over to a U.S. soldier? And what it is, is that you're doing a turnover. It's speaking, yes, the same language, but I mean military template language a lot of similar gear set goes in between us the army might have a wildly different piece of equipment or something cool or big or whatever than the marine corps and you can see the differences physically in between the marine corps and the army but how do they interact side by side them being totally different organizations in all actuality the Marine Corps being a, a technically we are a portion of the U S Navy, right? We're the men's department of the U S Navy. That's always the joke and can operate in various places around the globe for a certain period of time per the commander in chief's discretion. We're the only ones who get to do that. Uh, we can go and wage war in other areas without an act of Congress. Then saying we want to go off to war. How do we turn that over to someone else? How do we operate with uh, U.S. Air Force providing some sort of air ground transpo as well as running logistics for us? How do we do these things? Well, after actions from yesteryear, we have service members like myself who have said, we're the ones on the ground who actually have to do this. So there's a whole lot of feedback that comes out of it. It's not just the casual observer decided this is how we're going to zip up to organizations. So it is the feedback from the individuals that are on the ground that have to do that, the long-term sustainability, the relief in place in between two different units that are totally different organizations. But as, as those individuals from on the ground rose up and were promoted, then you had this, this, this feedback loop that had been with them their whole lives in the military. And it enabled them as leaders to at least have some sort of process to be able to go off of. Am I saying that every military leader is great at employing this system? No. What I'm saying is that the system is available, is what we use, is the standard 
for how we create that feedback loop. And it has been refined throughout the ages. So instead of reinventing the wheel in business, let's use a working wheel already. How do we create a feedback loop? How do you create a feedback loop in the military? This is how. We've simply brought it out to you in the modern workforce. So you do, you do not need to be a veteran to use 5P or anything like that. That's for everyone. The idea is just being, this is how we gain accountability. You know, and folks have asked me, because I'm an author, a speaker, a TED Talk, and all of this other different stuff that's out there, how did you lead in these scenarios? Was it justice, judgment, integrity, determination? You know, these are basic characteristics, let's say, of a leader, of a sergeant. Can you convey that across to an audience of people in a day? No. Characteristics. But here's what I can do. I can offer up our template, our method for how we actually went off and, and conducted those operations. That's exactly what our, what we are bringing forward here with 5P. So join the 5P inner circle, learn this method of creating a feedback loop and gathering proper intelligence from the ground up. And when you begin your plan, let's say for next year, as I said earlier on in the episode, if you have the feed, feedback loop going, here here we are, let's say for instance in, in June, and we're gathering debriefs and we do an after action report for the month of June. Well, that right there, that immediate... Now, when we're in November, now I have the ability to take that right there, that immediate debrief, immediate upon the completion of the action, I can take those thoughts, that feedback from right then in that moment, and I can apply it to my planning process for next year. So if you've set up a feedback loop and if you're gathering feedback throughout the year, through debrief after action report then when you go to conduct your after action review it's going to be that much easier so you might start with daily debriefs and compiling them maybe only monthly after action reports and quarterly after action reviews or, or even annual after action review due to the op tempo of your business you know, but you're gathering that debrief right there in the moment so that you can use it during your after action review. What I recommend, what I would love for all of you to, to be able to tighten up to is you debrief every day after every shift. You compile it and do an after action report at the end of the week. You do an after action review every month. And have the ability to just tighten up your actions. Even on a monthly. And what you're doing. Because anybody who's in business. In a long in a long term business right now. You understand what I'm talking about. When I say you're holding up last year's numbers. Or even the last three to five years. If you can. To try. To predict. In an, in an uncontrollable world. You're trying to predict what the next best maneuver is going to be. And again, this is part of what are the systems that you're using to create that effective feedback loop to be able to gather it. So if you're tracking right now, this is planning for next year, starting off with an after action review, going through topic, discussion, recommendation if you want the template join the 5p inner circle the link is going to be in the show notes or you can go right now to www.5paragraph.com that triple w is paramount seriously though you should put in the three w's first just just saying all right anyway like always, I highly suggest that you subscribe, rate, review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Player Fenton, just all over the place. We are a part of the Heroes Media Group Network. 
Heroes Media Group provides a voice to those who have served our nation. I'm not just talking about military. I'm a military veteran. That's great. I thank God every single day for the men and women who are our EMTs, who are our paramedics. Thank you. I thank God for our police officers, for our firemen. I thank God for those individuals who are willing to answer the call and go do those jobs which are necessary to save us. That is who Heroes Media Group represents, and they provide a voice to those who serve. Check out Heroes Media Group right now. We are a part of Heroes Media Group. When you go to podcast.fiveparagraph.com, that's podcast.fiveparagraph.com, you can subscribe right now. You can check us out on Heroes Media Group and the greater overall set of podcasts and shows and everything else that's going on over at Heroes Media Group. Check them out right now. We are proud to be a part of their organization. So look them up right now. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you on the next go around of the 5P podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, review the podcast right now. And until next time, take care and be well.